happy Friday. Um, we are so happy to be here presenting with you guys. Um, we just want to make it known that this presentation has been adapted from materials that was created in partnership with the nine Kentucky special education cooperatives. And you're seeing that all the symbols up on the screen. Um, we serve 120 school districts across the state. And so if we're on our next um, slide, you can see us. So we are a Greater Louisville Education Cooperative. So we support Jefferson County Public Schools and Kentucky School for the Blind. So our agenda today is we will review specially designed instruction and NTI guidance, the considerations for specially designed instruction unique to NTI, and specially designed options and resources. It is the responsibility of the special education teacher to adapt the content, the methodology, or the delivery of instruction to address the unique needs of a student with a disability to ensure access to the general curriculum. As we consider specially designed instruction, we are mindful that students with IEPs are receiving educational services in a variety of methods. During NTI, no JCPS schools are completely closed, yet none are completely open. In some schools, teachers are developing home packets that are delivered and collected by various means to the student. Some schools are using continuous learning opportunities with the teacher checking in with the student and parents through phone, email, Facebook, et cetera. And other schools have e-learning with instruction providing interactively through an online platform such as Google Classroom. The NTI delivery methods are changing frequently depending on the individual needs of each student the supports that can be provided in the home and the availability of internet services. Think about how you are delivering specially designed instruction during NTI. Given the varied needs of our students, many teachers are struggling with how to effectively provide STI in these non-traditional formats. Services may not look the same, but we can still provide the supports through other means and continue to individualize instruction based on the unique needs of our students. Keep in mind that many parents of students with disabilities may need additional support in order to assist their child to engage in learning activities at home. This can be a great opportunity to build relationships among team members through increased communication, sharing of resources, and problem solving. Specially designed instruction is always individualized and it's based on the individual needs of the students. Remember, if it is special education teachers responsibility to adapt the content methodology or delivery to address the unique needs of the students and ensure access to the general curriculum. As we plan for SDI, we should consider, are we mirroring typical SDI as much as possible given the circumstances? For special education teachers, it's not enough to simply check in on our students or provide them with, assist, with assignments. We also have to, have to deliver specially designed instruction. It's the essential component that makes special education special. In the classroom, SDI is often provided to the student using strategies such as modeling, scaffolding, explicit instruction. Um, but during non-traditional instruction, the same SDI can still be delivered if we have some creativity. Students with no internet access makes it difficult, but we can all sometimes use phone calls, text messaging, send home home packets, include lessons with pictures and directions, task analysis, schedules, manipulatives. For families with internet access, support may be provided through Google Meet, Microsoft Teams or other online platforms. This is a time to be creative because some students have different ways of interacting. There's a lot of uh, educational software right now that's being offered for free as well. Think about how you will communicate with your students, parents or guardians and their capacity to assist. Keep in mind that many parents of students with disabilities may need additional support in order to assist their child to engage in learning activities at home. This could be a great opportunity to build relationships 
among team members through increased communication, sharing of resources, and problem solving. When working with our students and providing specially designed instruction, we want to look at explicit instruction and for our students that need intervention and intensive intervention in tier two and three, it is all about the we. we have to provide our students with additional time with support from the teacher before we give them the gradual release to do, to do it on their own. We have provided a link, which is in the left-hand corner, to the IEP and lesson plan development guide that was developed to provide teachers with examples of specially designed instruction, as well as supplementary aids and services. The Department of Education has a specially designed instruction task group, which Christy and I are both working on to develop additional resources for teachers. All right, so I'm gonna get into a little bit of an example with how specially designed instruction would have looked in the classroom, how it, that same instruction can look in a non-technology, and then what NTI with e-learning example would be. And so in this case, we're thinking of a student who may have um, specially designed instruction in explicit systematic instructions in phonics. So probably a student who has um, a disability with specific reading. Um, so I have some um, links here with explicit systematic phonics lessons, scope and sequencing materials. Um, those links are all in there that you can get in and see the things that are in there. But we know that with our student in person, we're going to be using cards, we're going to be using sand, we're going to be using lots of materials um, that arm tapping and hand motions um, that is going, that's going to use all that multi-sensory. If the students are alone, if they're, if they're in the class or at home and they don't have internet access, then we might need to provide some very detailed explanation of what it is you'd want the parent to do. And so this link with these um, materials could really give teachers a good idea of how I would not send that entire um, Pack it to them, but it's a good resource for teachers to be able to break it down and share with parents. Um, you might also want to provide your parents with some decodable passages and letter cards, um, lists of words, visual pictures um, of their sight words, and instructions on how to use multi-sensory items. They may not have sand at home, but they might have salt or rice or um, shaving cream. So those might be it other avenues or sidewalk chalk that they could use in a similar similar fashion. Another idea is you could have, um, if you have a, if parents have a piece of paper, white paper and a plastic sleeve, they can make a dry erase board. If they don't have dry erase markers, they can use a crayon and just it takes a little bit longer to clean it off. Um, but if you do have technology, I wanted to, um, draw your attention to the University of Florida UFLY Virtual Teaching Resource Hub. So this hub has lots of resources for if you were doing instruction like the ones I was talking about in person, now you're going to have to do it electronically. So the first, there's a video here that has an introduction. There are lots of tutorial videos throughout the entire um, site. You can see as you go down, there's some lesson structures. When you click on that, they have lessons from K through five. They have instructional activities that can be interactive. Um, they have some ideas for managing attention and behavior during this and some tech tools and tips. So it's a wealth of knowledge. You can see that underneath in the orange, there's the tutorials, frequently asked questions, and then they're taking um, donations because this is free, which is a great uh, resource to all of us. And the other tool I wanted to um, highlight is the virtual letter tiles. And so with this, since we're mouse input, we're going to do that. This allows students to actually move um, letters to be able to put words together and sound them out and blend them. Um, so that this is a tool that is being offered free during this time through really great reading. Um, so your students can have some um, actual manipulation of letters um, while you're doing your instruction through 
to Google Meet or whatever it is that you're doing with your students. All right, so now I wanna get into an example with writing. Um, in, in this example, it's a student that's working on writing and the teacher is using self-regulatory strategy development, which is a, a very evidence-based practice. Um, it's often referred to as SRSD. So in the classroom, you're gonna be doing a lot of things. Um, there are six stages, they're recursive that you use. This also includes um, some motivating and self-regulated strategies, some self-talk. Um, there's mnemonics involved in self-regulated strategy development, depending on your mode. Um, and then there's, um, there's self-talk as one of the self-regulation strategies. So in this instance that we gave, the teacher decided that self-talk was something they were really gonna focus in on with specially designed instruction. So this plan that I found is really would be good for any of these um, state, you know, in the classroom, NTI with no technology or NTI with technology. Um, this is really a planning uh, structure for how you would do it. And they have each stage um, laid out. And then there's a place for the task analysis. How will I assess students? This might be a good thing for the teachers to fill out and send to a parent if they do not have access to the student through technology um, to really um, show the different stages and how it's, they're going to be supported throughout. Um, so that link is in there and you can access it. Um, again, wouldn't send it out blank. The parents would need the information from the teacher to be able to implement. Also within this, um, at this side, I have um, an, a link to a free IRIS module. Um, and Dwayne's gonna go into IRIS modules with more in more depth. I'm gonna show you one. But just to know that there is, if you're like, hmm, I wonder a little bit more about this self-regulated strategy development, there is a free module through IRIS that you can go through. Um, here's some other information. Um, one of the uh, one of the mnemonics is stop and dare. You use a lot of graphic organizers, so that's a, a whole um, support of how you could use this within your classroom. And this would be for older students. And then we have a self statement chart. So. This really has some self statements that um, you can use with your students to help them um, to plan their writing and to um, to make sure that they are using positive things to to get keep them on task. Um, the in the NTI section, um, I have a link for the writing legends which is a supportive platform that you can use with writing. Now, it doesn't have the SRSD built into it, but that would be what the special education teacher would bring to support the students using the writing legends so they could write, but then during some of their Zoom meetings or their um, Google Meet meetings, the teacher would talk about the aspects of the SRSD to support them as they go through this. And this would allow them to also monitor and support them. So now we want to talk about specially designed instruction in the mathematics classroom or NTI non-technology examples and e-learning examples. In the classroom when students are learning math concepts Students benefit from a variety of experience to develop a conceptual understanding. During the CSA instructional approach, students need concrete experiences to build a foundational understanding that can lead to deeper understanding and procedural fluency over time. The C represents concrete, which is the use of manipulatives in context. S is for the semi-concrete, a pictorial representation of concrete models and A is abstract, we're connecting the mathematical symbolic representation of the concrete and the semi-concrete. 
Keep in mind, though, students cannot be handed the manipulatives and expected to know how to use them. They have to be explicitly taught that they are mathematical tools to enhance their learning. While the concrete phase should be a starting point for learning, the remaining phases become flexible as students have multiple experiences. For example, while students are building concrete models, the teacher may be recording the semi-concrete and or the abstract. Using gradual release, students should begin to begin to use all three representations of the C, S, and A flexibly to represent their thinking. CSA is appropriate for concepts ranging from quantity and place value in early years to more com complex concepts such as statistics and algebra. The key is to find the appropriate tools and sequence of experiences that will lend to effective learning. In short, the CSA instructional approach is an evidence-based practice that should be used as part of the universal design for learning in all math classrooms with all math learners. However, for students with disabilities, using this approach is an intentional way that can imp positively impact their learning. Other tools that we can use in the classroom that can be accessed virtually are calculators, but students need Students also need to be explicitly taught how to discuss the mathematics using the specialized vocabulary, listen to and critique the work of others peers during the learning process. The Freyer model, which is shown in the left corner, is a good tool to use during vocabulary instruction. It allows students to record characteristics, non-characteristics, examples and non-examples. A non-technology example is that there are many manipulatives that can be found in a student's homes. They include beads, beans, buttons, toothpicks, popsicle sticks, Legos, and cereal. There are printable manipulatives that can be sent home with the students for future learning. The first one would be get to math. Whoop, hit the wrong button. There's a multiple uh, black line masters th that you can use with your students and send home with them. They can also be used within the classroom. These are, are broken out in various uh, tabs. We also have another one that can be used as well. Uh, I'm highlighting a number line of, for integers that could be used for older students in the classroom uh, and can be sent home for them to work at home on NTI. I also want to print out, point out virtual manipulatives. They are a substitute. They're not a substitute for concrete experiences. However, they can be an effective bridge between the concrete and semi-concrete phases during NTI. They are also helpful for students use at home or on devices with concrete materials are not available. I have left, listed several sites. Uh, one of them is the virtual uh, Didox virtual manip manipulatives. It provides various uh, manipulatives and while you're using them, uh, they also provide you with some tutorials to help out in cases a parent calls needing additional support. I would however warn you the teachers should be get on on these virtual manipulative sites and work through with the manipulatives um, in the event that a parent does need a, a additional help. The CSA instructional approach is often paired with explicit instruction for using manipulatives and representing student thinking on paper with drawings or symbols. In addition, scaffolding is usually necessary during the CSA approach. I have provided some additional resources, and as Christy mentioned earlier, one I want to point out is the IRIS module that is was developed at Vanderbilt University. Uh, in this particular one, they provide some instruction on visual representations, which is more than a picture or a detailed illustration, a visual representation or schematic representation or schematic diagram is an accurate depiction 
of a given mathematical quantities and relationships. The purpose of the visual is to reflect the student's understanding of the problem. The Iris Center covers schema instruction, which is a strategy on how to instruct students that have difficulty with word problems. And they also provide instruction on two different metacognitive strategies that students may implement in their mathematics classroom or at home during NTI. The first is self-instruction or self-talk and self-monitoring, which is a check, is checking one's performance, which involves the use of a checklist. All right, so we used, we just highlighted a few of the resources um, that you can also find in the, um, the uh, NTI teacher toolkit. Um, it's under the JCPS NTI support instructional toolkit. Then you go under teaching and learning resources. And this is a, a screenshot right now of what it is, but you can see up in the corner um, in the little arrow, we've got a um, link, so you, it will take you directly there. Um, in the bottom right hand corner, you can see that there is one that says ECE. So when you click on that, it's going to take you to our next screenshot. And this will be broken up under subject areas um, within special education. Um, so JCPS and GLEC worked collaboratively to create some of these. Um, when you click on any of those headings, you're going to be taken directly to relevant resources for both SDI and supplementary aids and services like text readers, predictive text, uh, virtual manipulatives. There's lots of good things out there. Um, there's also a lot of resources um, that are being provided free right now that are normally paid, um, that are self-pacing, that are able to be um, uh, set to the unique needs of students and then monitored throughout. So as we wrap up this morning, I want to point out that the collaboration of the Kentucky Special, Special Education Cooperatives have compiled, compiled many different resources for teachers to use as we navigate NTI. These resources can be used when we return to our normal classroom settings. When you open the document, you want to find the latest resources under the COVID-19 header. Go to the instructional resources, and there is a multiple, multiple resources that can be used during the NTI. We would also like to encourage special educators to bookmark this site as we'll, it will be updated frequently by the special education cooperative personnel. This concludes our presentation this morning on specially designed instruction for literacy and math during NTI. And we thank you for attending this session. Are there any questions? Um, looking through the chat, uh, we had one question from Joellen Wally. She said, what is the name of the reading program that uses the tiles in reading portion? Oh, that was uh, really, uh, really great reading. Awesome. Thank you. That's what I thought. I had put that in there, but I just wanted to double check. Um, other than that, we just have some people saying they really like the materials. Uh, Russ said that uh, Legos are the world's most perfect toy. <laughs> yes, <they are>. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, thank you all so much for being here with us today.